Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day 28 of the Leap Code July Daily Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's farm, the beautiful array. Uh, I usually start these live, so if it's a little bit slow, let me know. Um, or just fast forward, watch on 2x, whatever you need to do. Okay, let's go over. There's some fixed end and array number here. There's no K such that. Okay, so. Okay. Mm. These things are always a little bit awkward. Uh, first thing I always try to do is look at n. n is a thousand, so so that's good. Um, but I think I actually misread this because uh, well, n you, less than a thousand means that you can do something like n square algorithm. Um, but maybe you don't even need that. I actually thought that you're given an array and you're trying to do something operation on it. That's why I paste this thing here so that I don't have to keep on going up to, to check the definition. Um, okay, so in this one, it's probably going to be pattern finding of some sort, maybe, if, um, yeah, if that this is the case. And maybe the first thing that I would try to do is try to rephrase this in English. That means that for every two indexes, there's no index in the middle such that such that the element in the middle times two is equal to the sum of the two elements on the side. Okay, what does that mean? Hmm. Uh, so instead of this, maybe I'll, I'll do something. Try to. Um, yeah, you and also for this problem, you can return any beautiful arrays. So that means that the the input the output that they give you may not be that. I mean, it is. A solution it might not be the solution that's the easiest to implement so that's one thing to keep in mind because there are multiple solutions uh, and this is more of a competitive programming style problem but it, but you know we'll play around with it and for that I'm gonna try to you know sm generate small ends to kind of figure out what that means maybe now for n equals to 1 I guess it's just 1 and is equal to 2 is also trivial doesn't really matter. But n equals to 3, maybe st it starts getting interesting because you have 1, 2, 3 is no good because 1 plus 3 is equal to 2. So then you have to put this here. And, and immediately, the thing that I am thinking about is that there is some kind of parity thing. Maybe we could, and what I mean by that is maybe we could put some order, order odd numbers together or something like that, but maybe that doesn't quite work. Um, but but this is a satisfactory answer, but it's not only answer, right? Because you can also have, um, well, if nothing else, just the reverse of this. So, yeah. So maybe that is the only, no, you can have more. You can have like three, one, two, for example, right? So there are actually a lot of possible answers for three. For four, you have one, two, three, and then four. Does this work? I guess this works. I don't think this generalizes in that if you try to do six, um, in the, you cannot do something like that because well, two plus six is equal to four times two. So, but I and also one plus five is equal to three times two. But I think I immediately some see some kind of recursive type thing um, that I have to kind of play around with a little bit more, right? Because okay, so instead of putting five here, we want to put five in the middle. Right. Okay. Maybe that's fine. Okay. And then now, and of course, we're doing the odd even thing. But now, one thing I would say is that I think I have some sort of recursive type thing. Uh, in that, okay. So on the first layer, we would, if you want to just do everything by two, then you have again all the odd numbers first, right? And within these subgroups. That means that we already know that this is not possible, um, because oh sorry, it's not possible to to mix the left groups or the. Uh, I I think I actually messed this up. Uh, I think it's actually I put all the evens. Uh, I put all the odds first instead of evens, but so this is actually what I mean is you have someone like this if you want to do mod two, and you know that. Um, you know that. If i is in the left and j is in the right, there's no possible solution, um, or there's no possible k because, 
they just have a different parity, right? Because one times two is never going to be equal to one plus zero, or zero times two is never going to be one plus zero. So that means that now you have a recursive structure of okay. Let's say on the left, right? How do you want to divide these? Well, well, the thing you can do, of course, is now divide everything by two, um, and and in that case, you have zero zero, zero one zero, maybe. Mm, yeah. Okay. Mm. How do I want to say this? Maybe in a weird, different way. But you have something like this. Is that right? Now let me think about this for a second. Well, let me do the even side. Maybe the even side is slightly easier. To, because now we know, we know that's even. So to keep track that we don't have... Um, actually, this is... I, I think I messed up somewhere. Oh, no, no, no. I, I think this is right. It's just that I was thinking about this, right? Okay, let's say we have this, and now we divide by two. We have one, two, three. Um, because we divide everything by two, the same thing holds, right? Uh, meaning that for this formula, it just means that we multiply everything on the left by two and everything on the right by two. So in that case, we have this thing, and this is of course a similar problem to what we had before. So that means that we want to put all the odds in the front and all the evens in the bottom. And then we do it again, right? Um, so at the way end, I think that should be enough for us to get a beautiful array. Um, just kind of divide everything to halves and then sort everything by left and even. And then I think once you do that, you can actually be a little bit smarter with respect to sorting. Um, you can actually sort by the... What am I saying? Um, because basically what we want to do then, right, is, okay, I actually messed this up a little bit, but let's say we do this, and in this case, we put all the evens in the first, so, you know, the first bits are going to be something like this, oops. And then the second bit is going to be one, zero, one, maybe one, zero, one, yeah, you know, this is zero, one, zero for the second bit. Um, so then now, basically we take the the binary representation number, we flip it or we do a reverse in it, and then we sort by that. I think that should be good enough. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I think that's okay. Let me know if that makes sense. Um, maybe I'm skipping a little bit too fast, but the idea is that we want to divide. So the only way that now let me let me try to start from the beginning again just to say it from one more time. But let's say you have something like this. Um, and then we divide it by odds and evens. If we put the evens first, so we have this thing actually. Uh, we know that uh, oops. We know that it's not possible. Uh, if i is in the left and j is in the right, it is not possible because we have there's no possible way to, because if you add i and j, or numbers of i plus numbers of j, you get an odd number, but every number in, in between i and j um, times 2 is going to be a even number, right? So that's not going to be possible. Okay, so that means that the only way that this thing can be violated is if we look at it within the left and the right, right? And in that case, you can, for all purposes, just divide and conquer. And then let's say you have this, and then you can do it by 2 because you can just Think of that as multiplying everything here by two. So then you have one, two, three, and again you have the same issue of okay, now we have that. So then now we have to divide by that. Okay. So all that being said, I think that should be good enough for me to get an implementation, which is that we do the bit operation and then we sort it by reverse. So okay. So let's generate all the numbers. Mm, okay. Um, let me just go to x for x and uh, okay x plus one then right and then now for each one we want to sort by lambda x so for each number we want to return um let just go calculate x which is um what did we say it was? Eh, let's just say least least significant bit 
order. I don't know if this is the right naming for it, but it just basically let us get the least significant bit order and then sort by that. So we can do something like, okay, so bin of x, um, let's just say we remove the first two characters and we look at it, you'll see why, because bin of x always have a zero x prefix, and then we want to reverse this. Yeah. Well, actually, I don't think that's a. Oh, okay. Actually, I think that's on a list. So here, right? And I think maybe this should be good enough. So let's give it a go. Okay. Well, really? That's a way to whatever. So the first thing I would say is that, okay, you look at these answers and they're clearly not correct. Or sorry, they may be correct, but they're not the same as here, right? So what can we do to do this? Um, well, you know, you can YOLO submit, which admittedly I have done in the past, and maybe I even am confident about this one. But if you're a little bit concerned about this one, you can actually add a very quickly a checking function, right? So you can do something like this, uh, check arrays, and then here we just do a brute force um, definition that they give you, right? So, if I plus one n, where k is in the range of i plus one, j is good. Um, if okay times two is equal to So you can write something like that. This is a very cheap, uh, cheap trick. Uh, check. Um, it's n cube, of course, but we shouldn't. We'll just do it for like smaller numbers, right? So we can do if this is not true. Print uh, n nums, something like that, right? Then you run it to see if it prints anything funky. It will tell you. So it looks good. Um, and if you, obviously, you can also add something like just to be. You know, you want to be more, more explicit here. Yeah. You are good. You can do something like that. Yeah, now you get the way you are good. And of course, if you are not, and the other thing you can do also is that noticing that n is just a number from 1 to 1,000, right? So you can actually do this. Um, you can also do this like more. more than, you can try to input in a better way. And yeah, because you can do something like, okay, let's say you could write additional code. And this is more lead code specific in that how I structure it because you would just write the tester function outside of lead code in most regular circumstances. But in this case, um, you know, I'm just trying to keep everything in one place. So I would maybe even do something like for, um, hmm. Mm, let's just say for x is in range of um, from one to one to twenty, say right. So then you could do numbers is equal to yeah. And this this part may be a little bit awkward to be fair, but you can just rewrite the code a little bit. I mean, th for this problem, maybe I would have restructured the code so that's a little bit clear, uh, different, but 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 it's too late. So yeah, yeah. I would may maybe do something like this. And then you know it, this is very obvious. Um, so we just do the same, maybe a little delicious copy and paste. And then if check of k, oops, yeah, check of so you could do this for some small number. You know that the, the thing is that our check is currently n cube. So we want to keep n small just for testing. And we want the code. Ideally, you will not get anything. But and and this gives us more confidence as what what this code does, even though you'll probably just re, you know remove this afterwards. But now that we're confident for something like that, then we can start. Um, yeah. And then the other thing is just maybe test the bounds to see if it's fast enough, and or you know maybe your program crash for some reason, but. Yeah, so it looks like something is happening, even if it's not the answer that is matching this. So let's give it a submit. Oh, actually, let me try the other end of the range first, which is one and two. And mind you, was adding 
do we for for purposes? So actually, we only test this because I wrote the for loop, right? But so yeah. But anyway, let's just give it a submit. And this is good. Um, of course, if you for this particular code, uh, I actually think I wrote it a little bit the opposite of the shortest code. I know that people think those people who write very short code it looks like they're smart because they're able to write in short. But I'm you know I'm trying to impart some wisdom here. You can obviously just remove this if you want to keep it short. And now that I implemented this, you can also obviously just you know put it in line to something like this. I don't find that to be that impressive, to be honest. And you can even do something like, you know, uh, just have this. You sort it by, you know, something like that. Oops. Um, so yeah. So if you want to write a one-liner, you can do it like that, right? And this should work unless I have a typo, which happens a lot. So, <laughs> but yeah. So this looks good. But yeah, um, so if you want a one-liner, here it is, but you can also decompose it, which I prefer. Um, yeah, so what is the algorithm here, right? What is the complexity? Well, for, for this one, it depends on the size of the int or the size of the, uh, and here n is equal to 1,000, which means that at least, well, sorry, at worst we have 10 bits, uh, meaning 2 to the 10, uh, right? So that means that in this case, yeah, um, but it, uh, the generating function will be, you know, let's just say O of 10, O of alpha, O of um, the number of bits, but O of 1 is fine as long as you're able to articulate what do you mean exactly by what complexity and so forth. Um, but as you can see, this is just, um, this is linear part in constructing a way, but of course, once you have a sorting, it's going to be n log n. So if this is just an n log n algorithm. This is pretty tight, pretty sweet, I think. Um, that's all I have, and in O and O and space, even though n is not um, the size of the input, right? So if you want to express thing in in terms of the size of the input, where the size of the input is the number of bits uh, or bytes, um, you should do that because that is the normal notation. Even though given that the input is n, people can be forgiven sometimes for just saying n. Um, basically, that's all I have for today. Hope you all have a great week. Happy Wednesday. Uh, stay good, stay healthy. To good mental health, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.